Joining us right now is Fox News Senior Judicial Analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, good morning. I hope it's warmer in San Francisco than it is here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little warmer. So we still don't have any evidence of any collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. So how long do you think this investigation goes on, Judge? I mean, isn't there a point where a special counsel, Bob Mueller, has to come out and say, okay, here's what we found or didn't find? Unfortunately, there is no such point, and it's one of the structural problems with a special counsel. These things can go on and on and on. Iran-Contra went on for seven years in the Reagan years and spent about 85 or 90 uh, million dollars. So we don't know when, when this is going to end. At some point, Bob Mueller will have to say, here's the people we indicted, now we're going to take them to trial. Here's their, a report on uh, a group of other people, and here's the people we exonerated. But he can really do that any time he wants. Uh, you know, the, the process of gathering evidence is not methodical, it's not orderly, you don't always get the evidence in, in, a, in a rational fashion. It's like putting together a 10,000-piece jigsaw puzzle, and often little pieces of evidence don't really pop out at you until you can place them in the context of that which is ar around them. But I thought the most telling thing that Congressman Gowdy said was in response to your comment this is infuriating. And he responded to you by saying, yes, Maria, this is infuriating if you have high expectations. Do we have high expectations of Congress when it conducts these investigations, or do we expect Democrats to try and tear the president down, no matter what the evidence is, and Republicans to try and prop him up and, and defend him, no matter what the evidence is? Yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up, because really the point of the interview, Judge, was not about Adam Schiff. The point of the interview was really about the FBI. Yes. And that's why we invited Trey Gowdy on the program, because we know that the leadership of the FBI has really been complicit, you could say, in collusion with Hillary Tr Clinton over the election. Uh, you have everybody from Bruce Orr, who was the number three guy in the Department of Justice. His wife worked for Fusion GPS to Peter Strzok, the FBI agent who was uh, texting with his girlfriend, Lisa Page, saying that they want to have an insurance policy uh, should Trump win. And, of course, he did win. So my question is, is that insurance policy all these investigations uh, of the so-called Russia narrative? I can't answer that question, and we won't be able to answer that until until there's some end point here, but probably, and you just gave a very nice litany of FBI bias, either against Donald Trump or in favor of Hillary Clinton, but the most significant of those is Jim Comey and the statements that he made exonerating her, which were wrong on the facts and wrong on the law, and it's still a head-scratcher to me as to why he did that, and we may never know. He says he did right. it because he felt that his boss, Loretta Lynch, had short-circuited herself, that is, taken herself out of the chain of command in the Justice Department with respect to this case because of that mysterious uh, tarmac meeting in, in uh, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, that she had uh, with Bill Clinton. But look, the FBI yeah. has now begun to re-examine the entire thing, the entire case with Mrs. Clinton's emails. The FBI, unbeknownst to the rest of us, months ago began an investigation of the Clinton Foundation and pay to play whether or not Mrs. Clinton granted government favors to foreign persons and Americans in direct proportion to the amount of money they contributed to her family foundation. That's a very, very serious issue and may actually be an yeah. easier case to make. Well, you know, I mean, all of this really points to this bias at the FBI where they were protecting Hillary Clinton. And it, people want to understand if Hillary Clinton is, in fact, above the law, Judge. I mean, let's, let's take the case of Brian Pagliano. Her IT manager, right. he goes and interviews with the FBI and, and lies to the FBI, says, oh, no, I didn't delete anything. Then later, after it was clear that emails were found um, and they were recovered, he goes back to the FBI and says, oh, yeah, I had an aha moment. I did delete emails and I lied to the FBI, which is a felony. And what did he get? He got immunity, Judge. So, like I said, it's a head scratcher. And it begs for an answer as to how the FBI could have done this and who in the Justice Department was monitoring this. And was all of this 
a serious investigation <laughs> or was it a charade to exonerate Mrs. Clinton to enhance her chances uh, to win the election, which, of course, as we know, thanks be to God, she didn't. Well, you know, at this point, these questions are also opening up new questions about the future of Attorney General Jeff Sessions yes. because of these situations where we have all of this bias and you're not seeing the Attorney General do anything about it. There are reports this morning that the president reportedly tried to stop Sessions from recusing himself in the Russia probe. The president said on Saturday he still stands by his Attorney General. But Congressman Gowdy questioned whether he was the right choice to begin with. Listen to this, Judge. The better question, I think, is whether or not he should have been the pick in the first place, Maria, and, and whether President Trump depicted him and whether or not then Senator Sessions should have said, you know what, maybe I'm not the right person. So I think what, what your viewers and what my fellow citizens want is an attorney general that is objective, that is fact-centric, that we can have confidence and whatever conclusions he or she reaches. And as long as we continue to pick friends and campaign supporters to be the attorney general, and whether it's President Obama with Eric Holder or whether it's John F. Kennedy with Bobby Kennedy or whether it's Trump and Jeff Sessions, the attorney general position is too important to reward some political supporter with. That's, that's an important point, Judge. I, I fully agree with Congressman Gowdy, and it was a great question. Uh, that you put him, and the president himself has said, if Jeff Sessions had told me he felt too close to the campaign to be the attorney general of a Justice Department investigating the campaign, I would not have appointed him as attorney general. Now, we don't know what kind of a conversation they had. It sounds like they never had this conversation. It's difficult for me to say this about uh, uh, Attorney General Sessions. He's been a friend of mine for 12 or 15 years. But I, I will say that if he's too close to a likely and potential target at the time the nomination is first presented to him, even though he's wanted this all of his life, the best thing would have been to say, hey, Mr. President, I can't run a Justice Department that's going to investigate a campaign that I played a major role in. Now, for Don yeah. McGahn to discuss this with Jeff Sessions, Don McGahn is the White House uh, legal counsel. He's come under a lot of heat in the past 48 hours. I'm going to defend him. There is absolutely nothing wrong with two lawyers having a serious conversation about whether one of them should recuse himself, take himself out of a case. I had to do this many times as a judge when there was something in the case that I felt I couldn't be fair about. It is certainly rational for you to discuss these things in private with another lawyer and bounce your concerns and fears across the mind yeah. of the other lawyer. I suggest to you that's what Don McGahn and Jeff Sessions did. It didn't have the outcome that uh, Don McGahn and the president wanted. It makes sense. Judge, good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. Come back to New York. <laughs> I'll be back. Andrew Napolitano there.